Welcome to this presentation on mechanical and mechatronic engineering at Stellenbosch University. In our department, we offer two programs, the bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering and the bachelor's degree in mechatronic engineering. Both of them can lead to professional registration as an prof uh, engineer in South Africa. We also offer master's and PhD degrees, but just keep that in mind while you are studying towards your mech mechanical or mechatronic degree. To tell you what the difference between the mechanical and mechatronic programs are, I want to use this slide. Basically, on the left, you see the mechanical program, and on the right, you see the mechatronic program. As you can see, the first two years are basically identical. So you can easily change between the two programs during the first two years. We focus mainly on the mathematical foundations and the science foundations in the first two years, but we also start with the main subject streams in these two programs. In the mechanical program, on the left, you will see there's a thermofluids subject stream. That's a combination of thermodynamics and fluid mechanics. In thermodynamics, we study everything that heats or cools, and we study the exchange of heat between objects. In fluid mechanics, we study the flow of gases and liquids across mechanical surfaces. As you can see, the top left image of the aircraft and the airflow across it its wings. The second subject stream is mechanics. Here we study the interaction of objects with the forces that are acting on them. We can study that on the materials and see the, how the materials will respond to those forces. In the third stream, the design stream, we take these two subjects, the streams, and we apply that knowledge to design products. We start with simple product design in the first year. We teach you the design methodologies and we apply them to more complex designs in the third year where you will, for example, design a gearbox. In the fourth year, you will design a mechatronic system and actually build that in one of our laboratories. And we end in the final semester of the fourth year with systems engineering, where you take a really high level perspective and learn how to design a complex mechanical or mechatronic system. The mechanical program already has a lot of electrical subjects because that is needed in most mechanical engineering um, applications these days. Both programs also have a strong stream of critical skills subjects where we teach you something like good communication skills or project management or production management or similar subjects. As you can see in the mechatronic program, the two streams, thermofluids and mechanics, are slightly shorter. That is because the mechatronic students don't do all the advanced modules in the third and the fourth year. Instead of that, they have a specialized stream in computer systems we will, will, where we will teach you how to design a microcomputer and build it and implement it in a me mechatronic system. Yeah, the microcontroller will take measurements from sensors and use the software that you program on the computer and use that to com control the mechatronic system through the sensors and the actuators that you have on the system. Recently, in the third year, we have uh, introduced in both programs a data science module where you will basically learn the foundations of technologies like artificial intelligence or machine learning. This is foundational to engineering these days and will be applied in many areas of mechanical and mechatronic engineering. To show you a little bit of what a mechanical or mechatronic engineer is doing in real life, I want to give you an overview of the research themes in our department. Not so much to tell you about the research, but just to give you this sense of what mechanical or mechatronic engineering is about. So the first theme is energy and the environment. Engineers learn the foundations of science and mathematics, and we use that to optimize designs so that they are efficient and have the least possible impact on the environment. An example is the air-cooled condensers for power stations in South Africa, where we have little water and must make other plans to generate electricity. Most of our power stations are cold fire, so we use uh, the heat from the cold fire to generate steam, and that steam must eventually be cooled down again in order not to waste the water. And here we use um, air-cooled condensers for that. So you, on the right-hand image, you see those A-frames. Those are basically radiators, and below them, they are 250 very big fans, 10 meters in diameter, that blows air through those radiators to cool down the water. On the left, you see a, an experimental facility, which is unique in the world at our department, where we can test a diameter 7-meter fan in this facility using 
with the same technologies that we use in the power stations. We also do a research on renewable energies, and one particular area is solar thermal energy. And in the slide, you see an image of a number of uh, mirrors that reflects heat to uh, a central receiver. The central receiver is that tower. You see the white spot on the top of the tower where all the heat is being reflected to. And you get very high temperatures in the excess of 1,000 degrees Celsius, which we can use to generate steam again to generate electricity. So this is called a heliostat, and this is another very exciting area of research for South Africa where you can help to solve the energy crisis in our country. Another research area is computational modeling. Here we use the foundations of natural science and apply that in complex computer models to analyze uh, structures in mechanical or mechatronic engineering. On the right-hand side, you see an example of computational fluid dynamics, where we analyze the flow of air across the aircraft wings. This is just one example, but you can apply that to many other um, products. On the left, you see the application on a very simple product, a box for exporting fruit. Here, the airflow must be analyzed across the fruit to make sure that there are no hot or cold spots while the fruit is being transported by aircraft to uh, some overseas country. The box must obviously also be strong enough, so the structural integrity of the box is also analyzed using compu uh, computer models. So this is an application to a very simple product of very advanced technologies, and this is where engineers can help to make our society a little bit better. Another application in South Africa, which is very important, is the modeling of granular flow. We've got a strong mining and agricultural economy, so we use a lot of um, granular flow handling equipment, and this software can be used to analyze the equipment and improve the designs of those equipment. Um, on the left, you see the simulation, and on the right-hand side, you see the equipment that we use to test those simulations, because the simulations are essentially approximations, and we must make sure that those approximations are accurate, and therefore the experimental work is extremely important in this field. The third area is mechanics and dynamics, and the other work of Professor Annie Becker is extremely interesting. She has put more than 200 sensors on board the SIA Gallas, that she gathers data on his journeys to Antarctica, and she uses that data to understand the behavior of that ship as it slams into the waves through the roaring 40s in the southern seas, and also as it goes through ice breaking close to Antarctica. And thereby she helps to improve the designs of ships like this, and she also helps to improve the comfort levels for the people on board those ships through the knowledge that she gains from this research and the modeling also that she does based on all the measurements that she gets from the ship. Another area of research is more fundamental and this is where we study the materials and see how they behave. On the left two images, you see two video cameras that are watching a small specimen. You can see a little crack in the specimen and that specimen is being pulled apart and we want to understand how that will deform based on um, the crack that is in the specimen. And the video cameras use a technology we call digital image correlation, where we can analyze the three-dimensional deformation of that specimen under the applied load. We can do also more fundamental research into the microstructure of the materials through the microscopy that we have um, in our laboratories. A very exciting area of research is biomedical engineering. This has developed in the last decade or two in South Africa. And if you are interested in that, then starting with a mechanical degree or a mechatronic degree might be a good place for you to start with. In this image, you can see uh, an athlete being analyzed for motion. So we have a, a number of cameras that can track the motion of the athlete, and we can understand the technique of the athlete, for, in this case, for goal kicking. And we can help through this analysis to improve the technique of the athlete. But that is used in many, many other applications, also in the movie industry. So again, a very interesting technology being used in biomedical engineering. Another application for uh, research in biomedical engineering is custom implants. Here you see two examples. On the left, a mandible reconstruction, and on the right, a patient-specific knee implant. Here we help the surgeons design custom-made implants for patients so that they will have the most comfort with these new implants. We can also do fundamental research into the behavior of those implants. In the middle, you see a knee squat simulator where we analyze the wear 
on one of those knee implants so that we can make sure that the design will last the entire lifetime of the patient. If you've heard of the fourth industrial revolution and if those things are interesting for you, then the area of mechatronics, automation and design might be a very interesting area for you to work in one day. Um, in this research, we are studying, for example, in this case, the behavior of the mirrors in a heliostat field. I've already told you what a heliostat is. Here you see an example in the middle of the screen of more than a thousand mirrors that reflect heat towards the tower in the middle. That reflection must be accurate to get the highest temperatures at the tower. So the mirrors must be constantly adjusted um, to make sure that the sunlight is reflected accurately. That can be a very tedious process. So we are doing research into using drones to accomplish that. So the drones will fly over the mirrors, they will take measurements and send that back to the control system, which will adjust, adjust the calibration of the mirrors. In this slide, you see a simulation of an assembly plant in a factory. This is a small model that we have in our laboratory. You see a number of robots and an assembly line. All of these robots and machines have a lot of sensors on them, so they can gather a lot of data. And that helps these machines to be more autonomous, more intelligent. They can make their own decisions. They can interact with other machines. They can interact with the products. They can interact with the assembly line. And they can even interact with people in the factory. So that is the whole idea of having more intelligent um, factories for the modern manufacturing industry. And we basically gather all of that information and we create what we call a digital twin. The digital twin you can see on the right, it's basically a copy of the factory and it gives us a live um, representation of what is happening in the factory. And we can use that to optimize our production processes and we can also use that to make those machines more intelligent so that they can make their own decisions and respond to various situations on the factory floor. I want to end off by telling you a little bit about the exchange opportunities we have in our program. In the third year, you can do a semester exchange to one of our partner universities in America. Here you can study one semester and do a credit transfer back to South Africa. You do similar subjects over there. Or you can take a gap year after your third year and go and study at one of our partner universities in Germany. And after that semester of study, you can work for one semester at one of the industries in that area. And this is a fantastic opportunity to really broaden your perspective and get a really international view of engineering. If you have more queries about mechanical or mechatronic engineering, please email us at mmchair at sun.ac.za or have a look at our website for more information on the work that we do or on our programs. Thank you very much for listening. Bye bye, danke für dat jullie geluisterd het in Kosi Thank you.